everybody. On today with Paul, we have a Deck Rider 3. This is a LA120 model, and uh, we're going to set this up in the cafeteria eventually to uh, be a Twitter station so people can tweet and see tweets. Uh, what we're doing today is I have the ribbon that I'm going to be installing. This is actually an old used ribbon, so it's not in the greatest of shape. But we're going to put that in and load it with paper and see if we can at least type something out. First thing we're going to do is we're going to load the ribbon into the deck rider. And it goes in from the top. There's an access panel here that opens up. It's got a safety switch to cut the thing off um, when the lid's open. And I'm going to put it in so that the unused part is at the top. Um, the print head actually prints at the top of the ribbon, so you can flip the ribbon over when it gets worn. And I have a, a guide on the uh, lid here that shows how the uh, ribbon is supposed to go. And it has been a very long time since I've actually done this, so we have some rollers that we need to route the ribbon through. I'm just going to drape it over the top of the print head right at the moment as we go all the way around. Now there's a tensioner here and another roller. Now, as, the, uh, as you print, the ribbon gets paid out and fed through. When you reach the end of travel, there's a little slide here. There's actually a rivet on the ribbon that catches that slide and pulls it over, so it reverses direction on the ribbon, so uh, you're not printing over the same spot or it doesn't just stop when you reach the end. All right, so that's looking good. The next step is to put the ribbon into the print head and I can tell this ribbon is fairly dry because by now my fingers would be black. And I'm pretty sure, I don't remember if it goes under that or over that. There's like a metal shield there. I'm thinking it goes under that. There we go. So there we have the ribbon. It's moving through smoothly. So we're done with the ribbon. Next step is to load the paper. The paper we use is tractor feed with little edges that you uh, can fold and tear off. Uh, this, we have a, a box of some ancient paper. This was the cheapest variety. The edges are very coarse. The expensive stuff had laser cut edges so it would tear off and you couldn't tell it was tractor feed. But normally it would be a big old box that you'd throw under there. I'm just going to lay it down and it feeds up through a slot in the bottom. And you have some tracks that you open up and fit your paper in. I have these loose right now. They actually slide for centering your paper. This will take all the way up to the wide sheets and we have some of that in the box. And I'm going to set it about right there and these have locks to keep them from sliding around. All right. And we turn the power on and it's actually moving. All right. Line in local, we'll hit it to local so I can actually type here. Um, the way this one works, uh, you have a setup button and then a bunch of control things here like baud rate. Ooh, it'll go all the way up to 9600 baud. Ooh, that's fast. It'll also go down all the way to 50. Uh, we've been playing with our Duinos. We might set it up on one of those. So let's do 24, eh, I'll do 48 for right now. There. Um, let's see, I'm at the top of the form, so you set top of form. Uh, local form feed will kick the paper out one sheet. So our, we're lined up right for the start of the page. 
now. This is normally a full duplex sort of machine. So if I type here, it goes to the computer. The computer echoes the character back. So what you're seeing is actually coming from the computer. I'm going to put it on local so when I type here, we can see what I'm typing. And we have a very dry ribbon. Nothing's coming out. So as I understand it, we have uh, ribbons on order. They're coming via surface mail from England. So hopefully they'll be here by the time the guy that wants to set this up uh, gets here. We have a member that wants to come over his spring break and set this up so that you can tweet from this station using the deck writer. So I'm going to get this all configured so it's connected to a PC, probably a laptop that will hide in the back. It'll connect in through the serial port. And uh, we'll get that set up, and I'll catch you later. All right, so we're back rocking out on your teletype project. Yes. Now, you're, you're, you're getting the deck writer working because of my Twitter idea. for right. I wanted to make it tweet. Right. Now, this is really just a serial terminal at all this. It's correct, yes, um, with a tractor feed printer. Yep, so it's keyboard and a line printer. Yep. And, but this, it talks serial, that's it. It's serial right. in, serial out. So it's trivial to take this. Our, our, did you like tell people about our idea? Yeah, somewhat, yes. Okay, so the, the, the basic idea is we want to put it on the internet. Correct. So we're just going to put a little desktop under it with a serial port, and, and then that'll be our internet ethernet e interface. Correct. And we're set. So we identified the problem yes. and fixed it. The, uh, there's an eccentric here, and it moves this piece back and forth to uh, advance the um, ribbon, like that. Okay. Well, it wasn't doing it. And the Plus, shaft, we've got our little tension spring that has yes, to go in there, too. So. That's true. Well, this shaft was just spinning inside, and it turns out there's some rollers inside, and when you rotate one way, it spins freely, but if you rotate the other way, the rollers grab, and rather tightly, too. And the harder you force it, the harder they grab. Exactly. So it was just frozen from age sitting there. We had the same problem with Lazarus. Yes. It's the, the big thing we've been fighting over the past couple days is as we're getting old lab equipment online, we're, we're bringing you know, these demos back online and whatnot, and this stuff hasn't been used in a year. It's been sitting down in, in cold storage over the winter. And like Lazarus took us an hour to get it moving again. So we'll, we'll show you Lazarus in a separate video. But it's a lot of what we've been fighting is just old, frozen, stuck gear. Yes. Well, I poured some oil into the hole for the shaft, and it seems to be doing much better now. Cool. Well, shall we reassemble it? I think we shall. Now. That gets gripped by the spring there. And we're running a little short on the light. You want some more light? I can have some light. Oh, cool. So the spring goes on there like yep. that. And then up through the arm. And then the hole, the spring goes through the little hole in the, uh, I'm blindly setting it in there. That's oh, it. I got it started. Yep. And then there'll be a little bump in the spring. Yeah, I know. It's like my fingers are covered with oil, so it's not warming. <laughs> do, do you need a paper towel? Um, hold on. I need to get the spring in place and then get this on. Uh, that's hang where, on. No, that's where it was. Yeah, I know, but you're only half in place. See how the spring arches up and then back down? There, I'll bet there's a, is there a second hole that that spring has to drop down nope, through? Nope, there's only, it just, only, it just okay. sat, it was sitting right like that. Okay. So... There's that, and then this fit in there, and your oil on your way. this disc set there, and then our shaft goes through the whole shebang. And I need one of these. And another one. I see a spring over here. Where's the spring? Spring goes right 
Ah, okay. There. And that, that holds the tension in. Yes. Now. And that's the tensioner spring for this belt. Correct. Okay, I got it. There. there you go. Okay. Awesome. So now it's just a matter of lining everything up and tension, yeah. tightening some uh, set screws. Mm -hmm. There we go. Is that screw up against this plate? Very nearly, but not a hundred percent. Okay. There it so is. That's if you just if you just push on a little bit, it is. So I'm going to run this all the way over here, and then that's... some space bar action? No, no, no. I just, I'm, I'm kind of lining up to see where this needs to be. I think we're about right there. And yeah, a paper towel would be handy about right now. Okay. Can somebody please get us some paper towel? Smell of three and one. Isn't it nice? Yes. It's one of those things, it's just a happy, manly smell, like uh, hops yes. number nine. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, I see we're, we're with a pretty weedly tractor feed paper here. We got... Okay, the, um, I got, we got a the whole, big stuff. I got too. a whole box right over there. I got the wide stuff. This is the cheap uh, edges. You can see where it's the perforations. Yeah. I got some of the nice laser cut with the little Ooh. tiny hole, so when you peel it off, you can't tell that it's okay. tractor feet. I just want to have the wide stuff. So. Okay, well, which I is dumb because it's Twitter. We only need 120 characters. 40. But this is no Twitter's 120 characters. 140. 140? Oh, okay. I thought you said 40, but yeah. Um, how many? This is eight and a half, eleven would put us in 40 columns, wouldn't it? That looks like about 40 columns. Um, so I wonder how no, many columns, I wonder uh, if it's 80 columns, I wonder if it's 40 columns. columns or 80 columns. This is 80 columns. There's no way that's 80 characters. That's Look absolutely, at that. it's 10, 10 uh, characters per inch. No. Show me a one inch ruler. Okay. <laughs> Inches are bigger than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you're accustomed to all that, when you're accustomed to all that metric stuff. Well, yeah. See, what you got is some metricated paper. Metricated, um, metricated, but, uh, yeah. All metricated. right. So if that's 80 columns. All right. Now, what is on. the wide paper? 120? Or, no. It's got to be okay. Wide. As you're printing. Ah, there we go. Hey, it's working. And now we're feeding the thing. Beautiful. And then when it comes back, you're not pretty. It does. It's not bidirectional. Press, pull your hands out of there and press them. Hold up. on. Just lay on. No, wait. Fed it through. You didn't hit the thing. Yes, I did. But not if it's saying it's out of paper. I've got the paper sense right there. It's right in here. Okay. So yeah, you got the paper. So why is the paper out thing going nuts? Paper out. I'm not certain. There's got to gotta be another paper. Paper sensor. out has been on since you've been using. That's yeah, because, I know. That's because the lid's open. I don't think there's another sensor that there's we've got. There's got to be a sensor that we're not getting or something. But the paper comes up the right way, so I don't know what. That is. Over there. Okay. No, you're not going to do anything without me. There we go. 
Clear to send online. Hold on, hold on. You get a carriage return, not a line feed. You got to hit line feed. You get a line feed. <laughs> All right. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm wasting paper. Now, the first thing you do, I'm going to go all the way back up here because you can't read anything anyway. Why can't we read anything? Because the, 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 the ribbon's out. You put the, you put the top of the paper, the top of the print head. Okay. And you hit set up, T-O-F, top of form, bingo. All right? Okay. Now, when you hit form fee, local form fee, yeah. bingo, oh, one page. Well, hey. hey, we're getting ready. Right. Because the geek shall inherit the earth. Hit line feed a couple of times. We're off the weak spot on the ribbon. Yeah. Cool. Now if you type the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, you won't try that. Good luck. Good luck. Yes. Thank you. Line feed. Oh, shit. You hit form <coughs> feed. Okay, what did you hit? I hit local form feed and it just went wee. All right, so we've got it working now. We just got to put the top back on. Correct. All right, grab the top. Yeah, let's uh, get that all the way down so it's out of the way. Totally needs the wider paper. It looks weird without it. Now your next step is to grab a desktop computer and uh, does this sit any Hold special? on, hold on, you gotta catch the handle on the left. Alright, so the next step is to get a, uh, a desktop computer. A desktop computer, we need a DB9 to DB25 adapter. I got the DB9 cable to get from the desk okay. of the computer over here and then we need something and we may need a uh, Gender changer, we may need a no modem adapter. I got all those for DB9, I don't have DB25. All right, um, hit a local computer place, yep. grab it real quick, and let's rock out. I'd like to get this working by the end of the day. It should be pretty simple on any Linux machine. Because you just set this as TTY and go. Well, you got to get your win Windows, you hook it up with hyper terminal. But can you get hyper terminal to output from, you know, no, whereas with Linux, it's really easy. And Linux, everything, it, the whole TTY concept is really easy. I'll let so. somebody else take care of that part. All right, well, let's get it in place and going. Phillips screwdriver, uh, or no, the nut driver and the long screws. We do not have enough screws, so I'm only going to put a couple in. Did here. you lose a couple? or No, there were a couple. They were, they were missing. Okay, we'll put them in the important spots. All right, so that's it for the day, though, pretty much. You're going to go and find adapters. And, yep. Okay, cool. Well, I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Paul Kidwell. And uh, that's it for the first installment of the Teletype Tweet Project. You guys have fun, and if you want to get involved in this, learn more at www.thegeekgroup.org. And we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.